it's Jessie V and today I am wearing a cool and cute skull necklace. As you can see, I found this and I was like instantly in love. By the way, I don't have nail polish on these two fingers. I don't know why. I just, I picked it off. <laughs> I just love cute stuff like this. And honestly guys, the new Christmas mystery boxes that I have made, you'll find stuff like this inside of it because the boxes are filled with things that I absolutely love. Not this exact necklace, obviously, but they're filled with creepy stuff, mystical stuff, magical stuff, everything that I adore. So if you would like your Christmas mystery box in time for Christmas, the link is down below. But as you can tell by the title of today's video, we're gonna be talking about Where's Waldo? I really hope you guys remember this book series. I feel like Waldo is a character that we all just like recognize, but not a lot of people know that he actually has a much darker side. And there are a lot of illustrations in his books that are super creepy and actually got banned from some libraries around the world. So we're gonna be going into his history, the creepy facts, the creepy experiences, the creepy pastas about Where's Waldo. I mean, there's a lot to go through, more than you would ever expect. So without further ado, let's find Waldo. Oh, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> the iconic elusive man in the red and white striped shirt was first hidden away in 1987 by British illustrator Martin Hanford. Martin had been drawing since he was a boy and was particularly fond of viewing and drawing crowd scenes. He felt crowds contained a certain kind of excitement and he liked to capture it on paper. Now I am so fascinated by this illustrator because doing a crowd scene would be so difficult, especially if you ever look really close closely at his pages, every single person in the crowd is detailed, is doing something different. I mean, that takes a lot of work. So basically he approached a publishing company in 1986 with his artwork and he said he wanted to make a book, but the publishing company said he was missing one interesting thing. They really wanted him to make a character that would be a focal point for his illustrations, something that would encourage people to look at the pictures more closely. So that is where Where's Waldo came in and it's such a genius idea. What's so crazy is that it took him up to eight weeks to finish just one picture. Each picture was filled with various characters doing tons of entertaining things. Some of the spreads contained upwards of 3,000 to 4,000 tiny figures. And obviously that would take someone a very, very long time to create, as I said. The first Where's Waldo book was published in the UK in 1987 by Walter Books. Now it was actually called Where's Wally because depending on where you live, Waldo's name changes, which I find odd but fascinating. And these books have been so popular over the years, over 50 million copies have sold and they're still selling today. So let's get into some really weird and strange facts. In 2011, a crowd of 3,872 people in Dublin, Ireland broke the record for the largest gathering of people dressed as Waldo. So almost 4,000 people dressed up as Waldo and got into a crowd. That's crazy. The next fact that really shocks people is that Where's Waldo is banned in a lot of libraries around the world, actually. There was this one page in a book that he illustrated where it was like a beach scene. And if you looked closely at this page, some kids found that there was a nude sunbather lying on the beach and everyone was like, wait, what? So this book was banned in numerous countries countries and places around the world. But it has now been reprinted and redrawn to make sure there isn't a nude person on the beach. But like, why would he do that? Like, come on, it's a kid's book. The next interesting and kind of creepy fact is that you can find Where's Waldo on Google Maps. In 2008, an artist named Melanie Coles created a viral game called Where on Earth is Waldo? She basically painted a 55 foot version of Waldo and hid it somewhere. She she ended up putting it on a rooftop in Vancouver and she encouraged people to try and find it via Google Earth, which would take a very long time if you didn't have any clues. But it was crazy because normally you try and find Waldo in a book, but all of a sudden it was actually like, where's Waldo on Earth where we live? The next weird fact is that where's Waldo has an enemy. <laughs> 
I know, right? His sworn enemy is the nearly identical man named Oddlaw. So that's Waldo spelled backwards. And I believe he's wearing yellow stripes instead of red stripes. So it's almost like his alter ego, like the opposite of him. It says Oddlaw hails from Maine, where he lives in a swamp with other Oddlaws. And apparently the reason why they are enemies is because Oddlaw keeps wanting to steal Waldo's walking stick. I don't know why he wants it. I guess he just wants to be just like Waldo. But they have beef, and I did not know that before. So let's move on to some of the weird and creepy things that people have found in his illustrations. Some of these things kids were just so surprised to find while they were reading this book. Well, not reading the book looking at the book, I guess? The picture book. The first thing people found was a human sacrifice. It says when he wanted to, Martin took off the kid gloves and decided to give this book historical accuracy. So he wanted this to be as realistic as possible for some reason. So um, people were kind of disturbed by this one. The next thing people found is uh, people being tortured at a museum. This is one of the most bizarre scenes that he has done. These poor people are imprisoned at the museum. And not only are they an exhibit, but their long white beards imply that they've been a part of the museum for a long, long time. So people are just watching them being like attached to these medieval machine devices. And no one knows why he decided to include this in the book, but it's there. The next thing is the exploding muscle. So this illustrator, Martin, is known for making like paintings come alive in his Where's Waldo illustrations. But this one went maybe a little bit too far. There is a four page panel portrait sequence of a bodybuilder flexing and exploding his pumped up bicep and then openly weeping at the sight of his muscle exploding. So like it just shows the process of this guy's muscle just like popping out like literally popping. Next we have a little shop of horror scene. <laughs> there is a kid being attacked by a plant while this lady just like watches and smiles and doesn't really care. But this is like a man eating plant that they have at this, I don't know, farmer's market or something. Next we have the oncoming train. This oncoming train is about to obliterate a sleeping railroad worker and a family who is trying to fix their car on the tracks. So this train is coming even though there's people everywhere still. So it's kind of dark. Then we have a human zoo with animal visitors. This reverse zoo that has the humans fenced in while the animals stare at them was a little bit strange to people, but you know, I think he likes doing opposites. Then we have the broken ride. This malfunctioning ride is sending this person flying to their death and it's headed directly towards a boy who was floating in the sky. So this scene is just very tragic. Then we have just an odd one. It's the reverse mermaid. This reverse mermaid swimming along along with the fish top and a human bottom is very strange. And like I said, he likes to do opposites. And uh, yeah, people found that one. So before I get going, I just wanted to talk about a Where's Waldo creepypasta. It's basically about this girl who went to a public library to buy a Where's Waldo book. Well, I guess you rent, you don't buy in a library, right? When she went over to the shelf that supposedly had the Where's Waldo book, she noticed they were all taken out. So she walked up to the library and asked how she could steal get one. It says the librarian instantly got this worried look on her face, but she went over, opened a safe on the wall, and took out a book. So for some reason, she had this Where's Waldo book locked away in a wall. It says she took it home and wanted to read it right away. Now the first page that she opened of this book, it was an image of Waldo, but he didn't look like his normal self. It looked like he was just sad, like about to cry. And when she turned to the the next page, it was a satellite view of her town. And written on the page, it said, where's Waldo? He's in your town. She turned to the next page and it was a bird's eye view of her neighborhood. Then it says, where's Waldo? He's on your block. She turned the page and it was a picture of her street that she lived on. And it says, where's Waldo? He's on your street. She turned the page again and it was a picture of the front door 
door of her house and it said, where's Waldo? He's at your door. Instantly, she heard a loud knocking in real life on her door downstairs, but she thought, hey, it might just be a coincidence. She turned the page again and it was a bright picture of her kitchen and it said, where's Waldo? He's in your refrigerator. So she walked downstairs to her kitchen. The fridge doors were open. There was food all over the ground. So then she flipped to the very last page of the book and it showed her exactly as she was standing, but her back was facing the book's page. And all it said was, guess where Waldo is now? So he was behind her. I don't know, I found that just so creepy. Like imagine actually being in that experience. No, 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 no. Anyways though guys, those are all of the creepy and weird and history of Where's Waldo. If I missed any cool facts, definitely comment them down below. And if you would like to get your Christmas mystery box that is linked down below in the description. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!